What's up, Jason Gaddis here. Welcome back to another episode of the Relationship Schools Smart Couple Podcast, episode 150. And I am grateful to be here, hanging out with you. Yep, you. And even you, and you. And uh, I hope you remember that you're lovable, just as you are today. Just as you are. This podcast is for growth development mindset people who understand that partnership requires some effort. So we talk about that in this podcast. This podcast is also a platform to teach people how to be smart couples because smart couples get the goodies of a fulfilling partnership over time. Dumb couples don't. A dumb couple is someone who does not learn and is too stubborn or jammed up to. Okay, that's just dumb. You're not going to succeed if you play relationships like that. If you can create a fulfilling relationship over decades with no effort at all, I salute you. But that's pretty much no one I know. Okay. All right, single folks, this episode is for you. We did an experiment a while back with Evan Mark Katz, a dating coach, and to see if you know you guys wanted uh, some dating stuff, some of you single people. Because actually a big number of our listeners are single, believe it or not, and you're wanting help with the long-term relationship conversation and you want to learn, right? Because you maybe made a mistake, you had a failure, you feel insecure, and you're wanting to learn. So I salute you for that. Um, it's so amazing and inspiring to me. I mean, for any of you that actually want to learn this and specifically for the single folks that are like, yeah, I don't want to repeat that pattern. (laughs) Help me, help me learn something here. Uh, anyway, hats off to you. So this episode I have, uh, Marnie Batista, she runs dating with dignity and we talk and cover a lot of ground here. Amazing ground. Uh, I was really enlightened with this conversation and I think you will be as well. So a little bit about Marnie, and then I'm going to do a couple highlights of the episode, and then we'll dive right in, okay? As the founder of Dating with Dignity, with more than 25 years of personal relationship and dating experience, Marnie Batista has dated, was married for 17 years, divorced, and then successfully dated again, and married in the 21st century. Marnie is a certified professional dating and relationship coach and expert, writer, and nationally recognized print and online magazine expert covering dating and relationships. She's been in Cosmo, Magazine, Yahoo, Shine, Huffington Post, Your Tango, Cupid's Pulse, Men's Fitness, Glamour, and many more. Marnie's weekly dating and relationship web show, The Dating Den, has over 2.6 million views, and she was named one of the 10 best women's dating experts by DatingAdvice.com. Marnie's also received professional training in dating and relationship coaching, as well as training in the core energy coaching process from the Institute of Professional Excellence in Coaching. Most important, as a divorcee of more than 10 years, she understands what it feels like to be lonely and sick of wasting time on dates with men that go nowhere. So here's a couple highlights that we covered. Okay, so we talked about the shame of being single, how to deal with that. We talked about her personal story of being divorced, then single, and attracting the wrong guys. Uh, She called it her broken picker, uh, which was interesting. And, And I just want to remind you, by the way, this episode is mostly for single women, Although, if you're a single dude, this can definitely help you because there's just tips for, you know, anyone of any gender, all right? Um, she talks about this thing she calls the comfy, cozy condo, and I think she's basically talking about real complacency. And then we talk about the triple B, which is really blaming and bitterness, and then there's one other B you could probably guess. Um, and then the difference between the desire to stay safe or single. Okay, it's a really powerful point, so you're going to want to rewind that. And then I ask her, are there really no good men out there? Because you hear that sometimes. And she shatters that one. And then she talks about this thing she calls unlocking the secret passcode to where all the good guys are. And I thought that was cool. The difference between self-esteem and self-worth, that was a really good point. Um, What makes you, the single person, not available? All right. When you claim you want a date or want to be in a relationship, well, maybe not. Maybe there's something else going on there. 
We talk about how to face your fears, a baby step to value yourself um, if you keep finding lame guys, and why you shouldn't do an iPhone selfie for your profile pic. Okay. And then the question I loved asking her was, should you drop the GND bomb on the first date? And no, that's not the God bomb. That's the growth and development bomb. Because, you know, a lot of you are into growth and development and you're like, you want to vet out if you're new person is like into growth and development because I can tell you right now, if they're not, it's going to be a challenging relationship, more challenging than a relationship already is. Okay. Okay. So let's dive into this one. I think you're going to enjoy it. And even if you're not single, you're married, partnered many years, uh, you're not even in the dating scene. This is a valuable interview. Okay. Stay tuned to the very end to your action step. And please leave us a comment in the smart couple Facebook group. Okay. Here's Marnie Batista. Welcome to the show, Marnie Batista. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm psyched to connect with you. Um, so Marnie, you are a dating coach, is that right? I so am a dating coach. Awesome, I'm <laughs> psyched to get into that. It's, uh, you know, it's one of those things people say, what do you do? And I say, I'm a dating coach. And they're like, what? <laughs> so, uh-huh. Really? People give you funny looks for that one? They're like, what is that? I mean, people have, are you, are you a matchmaker? Do you fix people up? Right. Like, like don't understand that you can get help with something that is it's almost like counterintuitive people are like oh you would need help dating yet so many people need help dating so yeah that's so helpful thanks for just educating me right there i for some reason i'm over here the water i'm swimming in is like oh dating coach hiring a dating coach is like so normal but maybe not still well, in the world of coaching, it is, but you know what I mean? But if you are someone out there just sort of struggling with dating and relationship and, and you, know, you know, a series of bad relationships, I think most people really get caught in the terminal uniqueness, like, why is this happening to me? Or they blame it on external situations and they feel disempowered, kind of what we were talking about earlier. And then they don't realize they could get help. So. Yeah. Yep. Got it. And then there's shame. And then, so it's like, I might hide. Oh, real shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. So there, there actually is, I mean, it makes sense. There is, uh, in some circles, it's like going to therapy. It's like seen as maybe weak or bad in some circles, right? Still. Well, I, you know what, I think that what's interesting is the women that I work with actually are really smart and successful in so many areas of their life. And they've, um, so they've, you know, hired consultants to get into the best grad school, right? Or they work with trainers to like, you know, do ultra marathons or, you know, yeah. they, whatever. And so there's this piece of them that says, you know, this is the part I should be able to do on my own. When they finally let go of the shame and they take that same approach that they have in all the other areas of their life and they apply it to this, this area, they totally get results. So it's just bridging that, that mm-hmm. gap to say this is no different than any other skill that I've wanted to learn or an achievement that I've wanted to to reach and you know apply what works. So once someone does that and they you know open the Pandora's box, they're like, whoa, look, there's this is a thing. Coaching is a thing for dating. Yeah, cool. And then they get, like you said, they get a result. Great. Well, I want to get into um, some of your wisdom shortly. I just want to hear a little bit about you, just so the listener can connect with you. So tell us a little bit about how you got into dating, being a dating coach and helping women with that. So my picker um, has been broken since. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and t- when I was 10 years old, my first boyfriend, Kent Roeder, um, who I'm friends with on Facebook to this day, um, he was my first boyfriend. You know, it went to that moment of like, we were watching Miss America on the phone in Iowa, right? So you're imagining you're, you have a, you have a 10 year old, right? Yeah, eight and six, yeah. Okay, so here I am, like I'm on the phone with the big fat cord talking to Ken Roder. And he's like, you're so beautiful, you could be on Miss America. And I was like, oh, swoon, right? Hang up. The next day in school, he called me Boulder Buns. Now, this oh, was wow. before having a big booty was hip. And literally, it was like that, like that moment is like, I was like, someone thinks I'm pretty someone's being mean, you know, and I, it was like, my uh-huh. team was like, oh, right. Totally. And it happened again, happened in high school. It happened in middle school. And I ended up getting married when I was 22 to basically the first guy who asked, I mean, the first guy who basically asked me out after we slept together, <laughs> became uh-huh. my husband. Um, 
he was there, you know, he, he asked me out more than one time. We were in this relationship. I chose him because he chose me and we were married for 17 years. So we gave it a good college try as they say. Um, we have three amazing daughters, but in that relationship, I completely always felt there was something wrong with me that I was broken. I was still on that, that roller coaster of, Mm -hmm. you know, am I doing this right? Do you love me now? And that ended after 17 years. And it was really hard because I'm like a nice Jewish girl from Iowa. We don't, you know, do divorces. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't really deal with the core issue. So guess what? Get a divorce literally immediately. Same guy, different face. Yeah. Right. That's how it works. That's how it works. So then he left, he cheated on me. Right. Um, and two years had gone by and I just thought, what's the one common denominator in all my failed relationships? Me. <laughs> that was the same thing. Like the conclusion I came to. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Um, and I have these three daughters and I literally was like, if I can't get my shit together for myself, right. Cause I keep making the same mistake. What will make me take a serious look at this? And it was like, I have three daughters. If I do not address this, I will for sure pass it on. And that was the, yeah. that was the motivation. And I really started to dive into what does it look like to fix the broken picker, so to speak. Um, but also to create a place of empowerment and joy and fun and like choosing a guy and creating a life that I love. And I, walked through the journey myself and I really figured out it was kind of like a formula. Um, and I had wanted to write a book about it. And someone really smart said a book is not a business. And literally I was like, well, I meant to help other people. So that's how dating with dignity, uh, was born. And that's really what it's about. When you date with dignity, with self-love, self-respect, and you are empowered, the entire experience is different and you attract amazing quality men and you get to to choose. And you will no longer have a broken picker. Yeah, super. And so did you find an amazing man? I did. So I dated for five years. You know, I don't have like a magic pill story. Like I did that and then right. three days later, no, I really dated. I figured out who I wanted to be with, who I didn't. I had some relationships that were three to six months, you know, long. And I met my husband, um, which is really an interesting piece of the journey because my mom had passed away. And um, I coached my dad (laughs) to go online and he met this amazing woman who's now my stepmom really shortly thereafter. And I remember having a moment with what I call God and I was like, okay, so my dad was single for like a year and bless him, you know, but you know, why, why not me? And I got this message that said, because you're actually still not ready. Are you ready? Mm. And I realized that I had worked so hard to get strong and, and independent and, you know, overcome a lot of things that I was then scared to really be in a relationship. So I handled that last 10%. Um, and I literally met my husband two months later. We've been together eight years and married for three. And uh, he was amazing. Wow. That's and so, so cool. I, yeah. And I really find that women who are working on themselves, you know, there's often it's that last 10% that makes 100% of the result. Mm. And I, I really like the the part about you were single for five years. Now, in some circles, depending on your age, that might be a real problem or a person could perceive that as a big problem, right? Well, yeah. I mean, look, I was 38 when I got divorced. It took me till 41 to get rid of, you know, the, the dopey guy that I was um, attracted to that cheated on me. Um, and then I, I met my husband, you know, when I was, you know, for, I think 42. So I mean, from the time 43. So by the time I went through all these iterations, it was five years to really get to the, to the point that I was clear on who I wanted. And then when I got clear, it happened pretty quickly. That's so powerful. I just think that there's a lot of lessons in that story. And again, I like the the patience for the listener who might be thinking there's something wrong with them, that five years is, is right on time. You know, it's, whether it's 10 years, five years, two years, it, whatever you need to work through and whoever you need to become, right? A hundred percent. And so I always say that um, my guy after my divorce, I call him Johnny Locke. It's his code name. Um, he was the worst, best thing that happened to me, mm. right? Some of us learn lessons slowly. Some of, the, some of us quickly, right? It took me two years to learn that I was lovable and that I, and I had to suffer a lot in that relationship to figure that out. But you know what? A lot of pain means big, giant, giant leap forward from that. Mm -hmm. And 
So I'm so grateful for those two years because they just got me on the path. And what I would say to any woman who's sort of feeling that way is if you look at the relationships that didn't work out and you reframe that to those were the, that was the curriculum you needed to learn, right? Like yeah. you're in high school. Training partner or whatever. Right, yep. exactly. Training partner. I, I always say to our clients, like the men that come in, like that we're learning from, they're like our lab rats. We're like, yay, come, you know, like, thank you. <laughs> right? totally. You can't learn if you're not in the game, right? Um, and so it's great. So if you reframe that and you say, yeah, I've been single for five years or 10 years, what did I learn? Instead of saying, I suck, men suck, relationships suck, you know, what did you learn? Because from what did I learn with curiosity and commitment, then you can create the life that you want. You just have to take 100% responsibility. Amen to that. So responsibility. Yes, 100% people. 100%. Yeah, okay. Um, so uh, how does a, a woman or a man, um, a single person that's dating, not get bitter and frustrated because I, I love what you're saying. It's like reframe the whole thing. It's all an opportunity. What did I learn? But what if someone's stuck and they quite can't get there? What, what's their step? What, what do they need to do? Does it just change your attitude or do they actually have, are they kind of identified with their victim or what's going on there? Well, you know, both things can be true. Um, look, here's the thing. When you are in blame, whether it's your ex, your town, um, yourself. yourself, I mean, right? You are completely disempowered, right? Yeah. So it really starts with taking responsibility and it's convenient to blame. And then you get to stay in what I call the comfy cozy condo and put on your old fat <laughs> pants and Game of Thrones. I'm watching the whole thing from start to finish, you know, like, yeah, the binge and you watch. Get to, yeah. And you get to tell your friends, like, I'm trying, like I'm online, like there's just assholes online. You, and so you get to be right, you get to be comfortable, and you're single. So right. it's really about what I call choice points. And your longing for what you want has to be greater than, <laughs> than your desire to stay safe. Yeah, because say that one more time because that's, that's <laughs> an underliner. Yeah, your desire to be single has to be greater than your desire to stay safe. Because one thing that I will tell you is that in order to get to the goal, there will be some pain and discomfort involved. Because the great thing about your fat pants in the cozy condo is that you're always right. You never have to share the remote. You never have to, you know, go to your partner's nieces, boyfriends, you know, bar mitzvah in, you know, Fargo, <laughs> you, yeah. you never have to compromise. I mean, like, it's kind of great. Um, and so there's discomfort and there's pain when you're in an experience of intimacy with another person. And so you have to be willing to, to do that because if what you truly want is to share your life with someone, if you do not want to be at your deathbed, you know, alone, mm -hmm. right? then it's going to cause a, a, a discomfort. So you have to be willing to go there and learn what you need to learn. Yeah. Embrace the discomfort, people. Hell yeah. I'm with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I want to stay with the, the maybe bitter blamer person bitter blamer. first before we move on to maybe someone who's like, no, no, that's not me anymore. I'll, I'll give yeah. me some other tips. Um, what about the comment, especially with women? Well, there's no good guys and, and women are so far ahead of men relationally and all the men are stunted man boys. And like, what, what do you say? Slap, 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 slap. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So there are those humans on the earth. I totally agree with you. And guess what? There are men who are not. Jason is one of them. <laughs> I mean, my husband is one of them. They're actually easy to find. So, and you scoff at that, I know. But let me tell you why. When you are a BB, bitter blamer, and often bitter blamer bitch. Mm. You know, yeah, the third B, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, and I'm going to go a little woo-woo here, but the frequency with which you're vibrating is kind of like, prove to me you're not just one of those man boys. Yeah. You know, like who 
wants to go on a date? Like men don't want to go on a date and prove to you that they're the one nice guy on the planet. Like they don't want to work that hard. You know, I tell people the best way to find a partner is to take yourself out of the dating game. It's not a freaking game. It's not about like you proved me and you jumped through these hoops or it's not about pick me, please pick me, please pick me, right? Like I, pick me, right? It's about showing up, right? With your heart open, really curious about the person, giving them a chance to show you who they are mm-hmm. with all the love in your heart. It's a human connection and to try and make that connection. And from that place, begin to discover if this is a potential partner. If he's not, if he's weird, if he doesn't look like his photos, you're still in an opportunity to learn, you know, and to connect. And I will tell you, if I think back on some of my bad dates, honestly, I still remember them because they're probably some of the most entertaining, hilarious (laughs) fascinating people that I ever met. I mean, I still have some stories about the guys that I met and like that added value to my life. Absolutely. And so there is no such thing as a waste of time. And so if you're vibrating at, at, you know, pick me, pick me or prove to me you're not a jerk, guess what? Your frequency is meeting people who require you to do that. And once you shift your energy, and your beliefs and your attitude, and you actually are confident, not arrogant, and confident, not desperate, um, you will literally be unlocking the secret passcode to where all the good guys are. How do, okay, give us one tip on how she does that. How, what's one tip to turn that key? Okay, that so I have a client, Jackie, literally eight weeks ago, she just posted about this in, in a private group for our clients. Eight weeks ago, she was BBB. <laughs> And we got really clear on what were the beliefs that were holding her in that space. And there was some lingering residue from being married to someone for a really long time where she felt not worthy and not lovable and not enough. Okay. So number one is we revealed the unconscious piece, that last 10% that's keeping her stuck. And then we did some work to actually release it. And by releasing it, I don't mean just that you talk to your therapist and you go, oh, I get it. It's from my dad, right? Like that's awesome, but that doesn't shift it. Mm -hmm. So we need to go in at the point of where the wound occurred and go through some processes to really be with yourself in it. Number one, to acknowledge your suffering around it, to have self-compassion and self-acceptance and to have make meaning out of that experience as your emotional adult self rather than the child who went through it. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. And you're like, damn, yeah. I'm like an adult. Why am I still trying to get like childhood love from rando on okay Cupid? Mm-hmm. That's silly. <laughs> right. So we released it and then we did the third part, which is rejuvenate. So we taught her some skills, like how she realized I don't even have really great relationship skills or communication skills. And so we took her through that process. She literally posted like two days ago. I can't believe eight weeks ago, I was hopeless, sad, and about ready to give up. And now I have three dates lined up this week with all quality men. I can't believe that this happened to me, but I did the work and this is the result. Same town. Super. Lose weight. She didn't get Botox. She didn't get rid of her kids. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Yeah, that's so important. Do you... Do you think, um, the, like, this is like the deeper dive dating coach, right? Where you do need to attend to some unfinished business that you're putting out into the world, right? A hundred percent. So if you think you're not lovable, that's what you're, that's, you're going to kind of bring that into your life and be attracting someone who doesn't treat you very well. Exactly. And what I'll say, I really want to inform people about this. There's a huge difference between self-esteem and self-worth. Okay. Tell us about it. Okay. So self-esteem is um, conditional, right? And especially for women, but I think for men too, we get pats on the head when we do well. Oh, you got an A. Oh, you scored a touchdown. I have good self-esteem. Oh, I can't believe I dropped the ball. I suck. (laughs) Right? Mm -hmm. Like I didn't get into Harvard. I must suck. Right? So self-esteem is based on positive reinforcement. Self-worth is unconditional. 
right? It's I'm awesome. I'm lovable. I'm enough. As what I am. I learn, right? As I am. Like I want to learn and I want to grow, right? So when you have self-worth, life is like this, right? When you have self-esteem, it was like when I was in my journey, it goes like that. Mm. So we want to go into the dating space in a place of 100% rock solid self-worth. And, and when there's holdouts and I'm not 100%, what do I do? Just go work on them? Go work on those like 10% or whatever? Yeah, because otherwise it leaks into everything that you do. And it doesn't matter that, you know, you got a blow dry or you're smart or, you know, whatever. It just doesn't matter because honestly, quality men don't want to work that hard. And what I mean by that is they don't want to play the game. Uh-huh. Three day rule, bullshit. Like a quality guy's like, I, and I see this all the time. With my clients, my the guys that they date are like, thanks for that amazing date. I like had such a great time. When can I see you again? They're not like, I'll wait till three days, see how that goes, right? Or yeah, my I'm, I'm gonna ignore her text and do some weird technique. Totally. And my clients aren't like, oh, he wrote me. Well, I just I want to play hard to get. I'll just keep my eyes for a couple of days. No. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people do that, I'm guessing, yeah? They totally do. It's, take yourself out of the dating game. It's not a game. Great. Good reframe. So back to the, back to the piece about self-worth. Um, do I need to wait until I'm 100% to date, or can I do this kind of work while I'm dating in, in the field? Well, I would say that in order to be relationship ready, you have to be 100% emotionally available. Okay. And what's, what's an example of not a hundred percent emotionally available and what might get in my way of that? Um, I call it your love shield, which basically is when, whenever you feel scared or threatened, you, you respond by either shutting down, right? Moving away, which is being defensive, being aloof, blaming, or you move toward, which is the pick me, pick me. Right? Can I bring you coffee? Oh, you know what? If you're busy, I'll just go grab food and bring it over. Right? Like, yeah, I'll be available for your schedule and I, I'll just completely rearrange my life for you. Exactly. Right? So if you're noticing that when you feel vulnerable, right? Like a guy doesn't call you back when he says, or you get a text. My favorite story I had a client a long time ago. She ended up marrying this guy, actually. They were texting and whatever. And uh, he wrote her and she, she messaged me and she's like, oh my God, Mark did not put the smiley emoji. And he always like does a heart emoji. There's some emoji. <laughs> and she was like, is it over? You know, like right. she went into this interpretation and then she was like, wait, no, I'm making up a story because in the past men used to pull away and whatever. So she didn't put up her love shield, right? She didn't move toward, move away or shut down. She just carried on. And it was just that, you know, he, he was he was busy, so we didn't have time for that extra emoji. Yeah. Right? So, so as long as you feel like your love shield isn't up when you're dating, then you can date while you're kind of working on the details. Mm. That's really good. I, I'm, I'm just thinking about maybe another example where um, uh, I get scared of, let's say I, I'm scared of rejection on a date. And so... Uh, I don't necessarily read into those texts or anything, but like I'm coming into the date afraid of rejection. That's a love shield, right? Totally. So right. I need to go, I probably, in that case, I probably need to go deal with that before I go on another date. Right. Because your belief is that you either need to do something to get love or you literally freeze. So you don't articulate or express, you're not comfortable in your emotional self. Um, or you, um, show up like this. Yeah. Right? Like I, you know, because in the end, here's the thing to be in a relationship, you have to be, res and, and you're the relationship guy. You have to be responsible for your emotional safety because being in a relationship, having other people around you, you need to say what you need to say. You need to have boundaries. You need to share your feeling, right? So we need to be resilient. So if we just feel like anyone else is in control of our emotional safety, then our brains are wired to go deal with it, right? To protect. And we all have different ways of doing that. That's not the way to, to show up to attract your ideal partner. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, what's the, what is like one piece of a really bad relationship advice that a woman should steer clear of? 
Um, so I'm so glad you asked these questions, you know, because I am so over the make him want you or make her want you centric model of dating advice. And if you go on freaking Buzzfeed or you go on Huffington Post or you just go on Facebook, every like seven signs, you know, he's not into you and what to do. You know, how to text back. I saw something the other day. Four words to make sure you use to get a guy to want you back. I'm just like, oh, God, shoot me now. Thank God some of the comments in there were like, this is bullshit. Like, if a guy doesn't want to date you and he's not willing to have a real conversation, like, why are you trying to text him? <laughs> you yeah. know? And so my advice is this, is that that's marketing, number one. Uh, because it's selling you that you don't have the power, right? And so the bottom line is each and every one of you who's listening, you are totally worthy and lovable and amazing. And you don't need to like bend yourself into a pretzel or be who you're not to try and get someone to love you, like you, date you, pick you. Um, there is no magic. Yeah. Power. Amen. Amen. So that is a mission impossible that is further damaging your self-worth. Okay, I, I want to challenge that just a teeny bit here, yeah. if I may, um, and and I want to hear what your response is. So, some some women just aren't quite ready for, let's say, uh, maybe the marketing angle that's geared toward what we're talking about, kind of before, which is, hey, you got to take good care of yourself. Don't put up with bullshit. Like, be true to yourself, and blah blah blah. Yeah. Some some women and men, whoever, are just stuck in that place. And so a marketing campaign, let's say, to meet them where they're at, to invite them into the next step could look like, hey, here's how to get your guy's attention. But ultimately, I'm completely on board with what you're saying. But don't you think that we've got to meet, meet someone where they're at sometimes? Well, okay. So yes, marketing is meeting you at your pain. Be discerning about the solution. Okay. Okay. Because there probably aren't four words that are going to get a guy. Right. To marry you or marry you. <laughs> whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's funny. I was actually, you know, I get a lot of email and there was one that was so good. I was like, oh my God, I actually want to click on this. Right. Like yeah. really, what is the one thing that'll get a man to like, you know, want to have sex with you right now? I don't remember what it was, but I was like, this is some good marketing. So be wary of the solution because rarely... Does a Band-Aid magic pill slight type solution going to be long term? Because yes, you might get him to text you back, but make sure that you then have the skills to resolve the issue that caused you to break up in the first place, number one. And number two, do you have the skills to be in a relationship? Number one of which is most important is self-worth. Yeah. Totally. Right. So be wary of the quick fix solution. Yeah. I want to reinforce that. I'm a hell yes yeah. to that. Um, okay. One, one other, uh, I guess, observation is I see sometimes women shame other women if they're kind of stuck. Like I'm stuck with a guy who's pulling away, let's say. <clears throat> and women will comment like, well, just leave him, like get over it and don't, don't tolerate that. That, that feels like I get it, right? I get the advice like, hey, sister, like you don't need to be treated poorly. Come on, stand up for yourself, move on. But some of us don't have it in us to move on yet. We, we don't have the self-worth. We don't have the tools. We don't believe in ourselves. So, so what do you say, what's a step if, to, to talk to that woman? What, does, what can she do? Because she can't just like move on or stop being treated like shit. Like she's not there yet. So what's her baby stuff? So first of all, I'm really glad you brought this up because that also is like one of my biggest pet peeves in the world. And I actually get a lot of clients that come to me with that shame. Like, you know, they go to the therapist and the therapist for years, like, leave him. You deserve better than that. You're awesome. Why haven't you left him yet? And they just feel like crap or they go to the coach or whatever and they disappear, right? Because their shame grows so big. Yeah. So one of the things that I really teach women is what I call tools, not rules. There are no rules right? Everything is in context and everything is in your journey and, and your ability to heal what you need to heal and do what you need to do. And some like me, two years, right? Some, believe me, people are like, why are you with that asshole? <laughs> um, yeah. Right? 
So, um, so first of all, I just want to say like, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just that you're in life school and you're taking like, you know, freshman year over and over again. And that's okay because you're, you're missing something. Oh, right? Nice. So, um, so, and I have so many clients that come to me from this place. And so the first thing I say is stop beating yourself up. Like the, that's the worst thing you can do. Right. So really what I would say, the first thing is be with yourself in your pain and your suffering. And there's an amazing, amazing, amazing woman named Kristen Neff, who's like one of the foremost experts on self-compassion. And she teaches this tool where you literally put your hand on your heart, right? And you say mm -hmm. to yourself, Marnie, I understand your pain and suffering around Johnny Locke. I know this is really hard for you. I love you. Simple, so, direct. Simple, simple, because you yep. can't be empowered. You can't make choices. Literally, you're creating cortisol, like rushing through your body. You're like oh, yeah. prefrontal cortex, the rational decision maker of your body cannot function at its optimum when you are in self-referential processing, which is when your brain just goes, you suck. What's wrong with you? He's an asshole. What's wrong with you? I can't believe you, know, you can't. So to create the space to even make choices rather than react. Mm -hmm. Self-compassion is a huge tool. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's great. Yo, yo, quick interruption from our sponsor, the relationship school. As you know, there is a class now on how to do romantic relationships. Well, it's called the deep psychology of intimate relationships and it's here to change your life. Imagine what this would have been like growing up had you uh, had a class that actually taught you how to work through differences with other people. Check out what Daxa from Switzerland said about her experience. So this last year I went to the deep psychology of intimate relationship course and I also was a TA with Jason Geddes and there were two big surprises for me in all that intense and lovely time and the first one was that I think if I have I could have changed my relationships around by sitting on a cushion and thinking about them I might have come really close to doing it or even done it by myself but the real difference that the school made for me and the deeper course made for me was having practice partners and seeing the tools embodied and just really practicing it and the embodied tools in Jason as a guide makes here. And then the second thing that surprised me was what an energy drain is it is to have relationships that are not fulfilling and to feel a base level of anxiety that I was basically unconscious to in my relationships. So now I'm really surprised at the amount of energy that is coming back to me since my relational life is taken much better care of. There you go. Daxa had a really powerful experience. And what she said basically was, hey, you can't learn this stuff in isolation. It's relationship after all. And a lot of you are probably around draining relationships right now. Relationships that suck you dry, that don't nourish you. So she got to be around a nourishing community. Okay, if you're interested, go to jasongaddis.com slash relationship school for much more information and to sign up. We still have a few spots left and we're starting soon. Okay, back to Marnie. Okay, next question, Marnie. Does it matter how a person dates? There's so many options now, right? Uh, so many apps. Uh, and it's so fast. Uh, what's, what is the modern, mature woman, what, what's the advice for her that's like, hey, I'm smart, I, I get it, but I don't want to, quote, play the game, as you say. Uh, we don't want to do that. What, what, how are we supposed to approach this? How can she approach this? Because the, the options seem endless. It's a buffet, right? So, right. Um, so the thing is, number one is, this is kind of where I said that rejuvenate part. I was talking about with Jackie, where you have to kind of learn the skills, right? So first of all, you want to have a diversified dating calendar and portfolio, so to speak, right? So don't okay. just rely on online dating and don't just rely on offline dating. There's so many options. So what is exciting to you that is natural, right? So I always say, be the person you want to attract. So if you also love, like I have a client who loves to, to do wine tastings, 
And so she's like, I found this singles thing. She lives in San Diego. She's like, it's like a literally a singles thing up in Napa. And like, we're going to go on wine tasting. She's like, I may or not, may not meet somebody, but I'm going to have fun. And I'll definitely have cool people. And I love wine. And so that's a great thing to put, you know, in the plan. And she's also online. So if you're online, you know, I would say pick like one or two of like the big sites and then one or two um, niche sites, like for Christian Mingle or Fitness Singles or something that's very Be niche. mindful or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, but I wouldn't do more than like three dating sites because that's like a lot, especially we want you to be intentional and spend like 20 minutes a day, like answering and being engaged. So don't overdo it. Um, I think the apps can be okay. You just have to be more discerning, but I have tons of clients who've met people on Tinder and Bumble and, and all of that, you know? Yeah. Um, so the thing is you want to make sure that your energy stays high. So some people binge date. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> all right. I'm doing this. They sign up for a bunch of shit. They download and they're like, swipe, swipe. Nah, nah, nah. And then, you know, I've got four dates on Saturday. And like literally by Tuesday, they're like, oh my God. I can't. Yeah. Right. So wow. you want to pace yourself. You want to keep your energy up. You want to have that resilience. So you're not taking things personally. You're having fun with it. And you want to make sure that you have the right skills. So look at your profile. Is it written for a man or did you write it like your um resume or mm -hmm. your did you write it like your english teacher would be proud of you <laughs> um your photos oh my god it makes such a difference you have to have professional photos not now i had one client who came to me and she was like she's british so she was like i did what you said i've got my head shot she was like a, a consultant and i literally showed it to my kids and I, who are women now I was like, what does this photo say? And they were like, uptight, boring. It was literally like, you know, mm -hmm. like in a suit, like with her like bob and it was whatever. And I was like, oh my God, we have to change that. And so she got some photos and literally the first date she went on from online is like her boyfriend now. Wow. Yeah. So, so selfie doesn't work? iPhone selfie? iPhone selfies, no. <laughs> I mean, um, no. And Women, <laughs> I've seen so many profiles and there is people like, I would never do that. Mark. Like people, I know you're listening. You're like, I would never do that. Okay. Do you possibly have like all your photos? Are you and these amazing vacations, except that you're wearing glasses like this and a baseball cap or a biking helmet or like your big beach hat and the guy, nobody can see your face, yeah. right? If you're a guy, please do not do shirtless selfies. <laughs> 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 not working um nice. also big mistake uh women do this and i think guys do it too lots of pictures with you and your girlfriends my clients would be like well i want him to know that i have a lot of friends i'm like he's literally like you know pin like which one was her oh her friend's cute i mean no yeah don't do that okay. uh, <laughs> um yeah. May, this is obvious, but again, everyone does it. I know there's that great picture of you from like 2012 and you looked really skinny or really buff, but like, don't put it up if you don't look that way right now. Okay. W what about setups? I love setups. So you have to be discerning though, right? So I remember when I was dating, my biggest complaint was I would tell people, you know, I'm looking and <laughs> I would walk out of those days and I'd be like, this is what my friend thought. Well, she breathes and like he breathes, they're perfect for each other, you know, uh -huh. like just because we're alive and we're human and we're single. So tell your friends, uh, we have our clients come up with like five non-negotiables that are based on their values, right? Yep. Not characteristics, not tall, dark and handsome. So you might say to your friend, you know, I'm looking for a guy who is like really into like being in the upward spiral of life. Like he doesn't even have to like have gone to Tony Rob. It's like, he doesn't have to go to therapy. He just like, he's a person who wants to grow and learn as, and sees life as an adventure. And he doesn't have to make a certain amount of money, but like he's passionate about what he do does. And you know, he, he can live a certain lifestyle and I'm happy to, to be supported or not be supported. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, I love it. If um, he can laugh at himself like that, you know, da, da, da. right. So paint that picture. And say, and if you know of anyone like that, I would love to be introduced. That's so awesome. I've never, I don't think I've ever once had anyone, I, I've had people approach me plenty 
in the in my life just saying hey i'm i'm single just a heads up kind of keep an eye out for me type of thing but not one of them has said like just the, the quick little bullet point list that you did that would have probably helped it even more like clarify like wow you're really clear about what you want that's awesome and that's what's sexy to a, a quality guy women are always like you know I, I don't know if i should let him know i'm looking for a serious thing and i'm like well yeah yeah Okay, here's, here's one. Um, as we start to wind down, a question I get a lot is, should I tell him or her that, like my non-negotiables on the first date, like you've got to be into personal growth and development, for example. Do you no. throw that down on the first date? Do not throw that down on the first date. So number one, you want to be discerning in their profile when you're looking at them or the fix up or whatever it is. Um, I call it data dating. Okay, so you are going on dates and you're having fun and you're curious and you're looking to see if they share those values. Because everyone will say in their profile or your friend will be like, oh my God, he's so nice and he's successful and he's hilarious. And, you know, I think he like read like women and Venus and Mars. I saw that once on his bookshop, <laughs> right? So you want to show up open and curious and you just notice how they are not only on a date, but in between dates. What are the stories that they tell about their family if you're into families? They're like, ugh, my mother, like, God, I can't believe I have to, you know. He's probably not going to have family values. So you want to be curious. You want to be smart. You want to have great conversations to discover, discover value. Yeah. So listen for the things that you care about and, and be curious. Ask questions. Ask good questions. Absolutely. And I will say this. The, the British client that I told you about, when we first started, she was like, I will never ever date anyone who voted against Brexit or voted for Brexit. She was like, that is my, and I was like, really, that is like the top five. So we went through the exercise and she realized, well, actually it's not. So the guy that's now her, now her boyfriend on the first date, he, he voted for Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, besides that, what did you like about him? Yeah. And she had all of these amazing things she liked about him. And he showed up in between the dates. He called. He was attentive. And in the end, she was like, we've made a decision. We just don't talk about politics. I, I personally, she's like, I don't really care about it that much. It's not like, I'm not like an advocate. And so she's like totally in love with this guy. And it's great. And they just don't talk about politics. Yeah, great. Okay. One last piece of parting advice for this, uh, the singles out there. Just anything we haven't talked about uh, or a reminder that we already talked about. Don't let the data become your drama. Mm. Like there's, you know, you can find whatever you want. You can find it online. There's more, you know, there's no good men there. You know, it's harder for women over 50. You know, there's more divorce than ever. Literally, like you can find anything to support your fear. So right. do not believe the data. Do not turn it into your drama. You are an individual. There's no rule that says you can or can't find love. So take 100% responsibility, go through that process, figure out what it is you need to shift or change, do it. And love is there for you. Beautiful. Thank you. Final question for real, <laughs> for reals, for reals. Um, and this one's advice for me. So okay. you, you don't, you know, I'm not dating, but, um, I'm married actually. Uh, this is more, I run the relationship school and we're on a mission to teach young people, especially adults for sure, but um, high school kids and young adults about romantic relationships and how to have safe, sexy, successful romantic relationships. So if you were to come in, for example, and teach one guest class, or if you were to give, whisper in my ear, Jason, you have to teach this one thing, what would you tell me? Well, I love this question because I have three daughters, right, who are young adults. Um, and what I have taught them is that um, you are in charge of you. And you are creating your result. So get clear on who you are and what you want. And don't be afraid to ask for it. Mm. Nice. So it's know yourself. It's like know that inner compass, like what you stand for, who you are. And don't be afraid to ask for it and go after what you want. Yeah, because Beautiful. it doesn't matter what age you are. Your needs count. Yeah. Awesome, Marnie. Wow, this, is, uh, this has been chocked full of amazing wisdom for the singles out there. Thank you so much. Oh my God, it was a blast. Thank you. Mwah.
Yeah. And where can people find you? And uh, what's, uh, do you have any books or blogs or? I do. Um, I have a a website datingwithdignity.com and you can get my book, which is called um, how to get a quality guy without going on 200 dates. And what makes this book a little bit different is that when I was going through my divorce, I ended up writing a memoir. And so the first part of it is really the detail and the pain that I was going through when I was walking through that, that part of my life to get to self-worth and how I took that and became the person I am. And then I teach you how to do that in the book. So it's a little memoir and a little self-help. Okay. We'll make sure to include that in the show notes. That sounds outstanding. Thank you. Okay. Good to hang out with you, Marnie. All right. See you later. Bye everyone. Well, what did you think of Marnie? I thought she was awesome. So many, so many valuable tips there for the singles, particularly single women. Uh, definitely go check out her site, right? Datingwithdignity.com. And on the front page there, she's got to uh, get a free copy of my book, How to Find a Quality Guy Without Going on 200 Dates. Seems pretty solid to me based on what she just shared here. So check that out. Now, here is your action step. Okay, remember when Marnie was saying, I was like, okay, what's the baby step you can do if you're feeling stuck and kind of beating yourself up? You know, she's like, well, stop beating yourself up. Um, But one of the things that I agree with her that I teach people is you got to be with your pain, right? Be with your longing, be with your loneliness, be with your hurt feelings. Um, And there's a difference between feeling and dwelling. And I wrote a blog post on this a while back. I may have even done a podcast on it. But there's a really big difference. Then dwelling is you're sitting in the eddy, not going anywhere. This is what I taught my son the other day when he was his tantrum was going on and on. I was like, dude, you, you ride the wave like a surfer, and that's your feeling. You cry and you you scream and you you thrash about and you really let your feelings out and you feel the totality of your experience. And this is a skill you need to learn, by the way, if you want to succeed at long-term partnership. And dwelling, which is you're out in a rip current and getting stuck like in an eddy in a river and you just go around and around in a circle. There's a big, big difference between feeling and dwelling. And what Marnie and I are talking about here is feel your pain like a wave and ride it into the shore. And the shore is like the next place. Like usually after a good cry, we feel better, not worse. Um, Usually after letting some anger out, or feeling the anger go through and rip through our body, we feel um, maybe like tired in a good way, not tired like beat up by life, right? That's usually there's an indicator there, right? So that's a really important action step. And what's that, what that's going to allow you to do is the more you can be with your experience, the less you're going to need something from the outside, like a man or a person or alcohol or whatever it is to medicate it, to fill that void. It's really important that we're able to stand on our own two feet and be with our experience, okay? So do that, all right? On your way as you date around. And this is helpful for married folks too, okay? Partnered folks is be with your upset when you're upset. Okay, folks, you know the Relationship School's got a big weekend coming up on embracing conflict. And really there's two main components here embracing conflict and learning how to repair. And both of these involve what I just taught right there, which is to be with your experience. That's so, so essential. If you can't be with your experience, you're gonna have a really hard time and you will likely end up divorced or separated or broken up with and alone um, because we simply just can't tolerate the emotional upset going on in our body. So this is a really, really important skill to learn, okay? And if you want help, uh, the relationship school can help you, all right? Uh, especially if you train with us for nine months, you're going to get uh, steeped in this kind of practice of being with your upset and being with your emotions, even being with your joy. A lot of us can't actually hang with joy very long before we go into despair or we change the channel because it's like intense or we can't be with someone loving on us really for a long time. We, we deflect and want to move away. So it's good practice, guys. So come train with us at the relationship school. And if you want to come to the weekend as a primer and then decide if you want to do the nine-month training, great. JasonGaddis.com slash RS weekend if you want to find out more about embracing conflict. 
Okay. This will help you not get divorced and not get broken up with and instead empower you to handle the inevitable upsets that do happen in a long-term relationship. And remember, follow me on Instagram. In Instagram stories, I'm about to drop an yet another discount for the live weekend. Okay, if you're like, oh, I can't afford $1,000, how about half price? Can you do that? One of our alumni just graciously offered her credit that she got uh, for graduating the Relationship School Roots community. She offered that as a scholarship to someone here. And her name's Rachel, and she kicks ass. And she's like, yeah, I would love to offer that to get someone who's having financial challenges come to the weekend. I was like, whoa. So Rachel's going to cover you for half of your tuition, all right? If you want that, you've got to follow me on Instagram as this week I'm going to be announcing who gets that, okay? On Instagram stories, got to follow my stories as I will drop some hints. And I'm going to ask you a question in there that if you get the answer, if you're the first person to answer, you get to come uh, for half price. And then throughout August, I will continue to offer prizes. We have a new Relationship School website coming up and we've got a store um, and I just showed people the first product in the store, um, yesterday on Instagram. So if you want more of the inside scoop of what's going on here at the relationship school and the smart couple, you want to follow me on Instagram and Instagram stories. Okay. All right. Um, thanks folks. Have a beautiful rest of your day, morning, evening, and we'll talk soon. 